what we're talking about today is actually two different topics. First of all, the concept of an array of structs. And secondly, the concept of uh, console application command line arguments. And I have two different programs that illustrate the two different concepts. And once again, both of these are working towards a practical program that uh, I find extremely useful in building my website that lists uh, code. In the DOS box, uh, we can do a directory for uh, C sharp programs. And you see there's the two programs that illustrate the two concepts I was talking about. And if I right click or left click and drag the mouse and then hit enter to copy the clipboard and then on the command line type uh, NPP for notepad plus plus and a right click to put what I copied in the clipboard in onto the command line and then hit enter. We'll go into the uh, the code for the array of structs program. And essentially this is a follow-on of the program we discussed previously, so I'm not going to go into a lot of details. This is the structure we discussed in the previous video. But when we instantiate the uh, structure in the main program, instead of being a single structure, we have an array of structures. So we just specify the name of the structure, two square brackets, the name of the array object we're creating and then we have an initializer list defined by uh, two uh, braces and within the braces we have a number of new statements that create the uh, structure on the heap and as always we pass the uh, constructor two uh, values a character and a string and we're saying uh, less than needs to be translated into ampersand LT semicolon greater than needs to be translated into ampersand GT semicolon and so on. We have four entries in the array table and in order to see what we created I'm going to iterate through the uh, uh, array using the for each construct and this basically says take the structure trans and a, a element defined as trans called TTE and for each one of these in the array TT table uh, do a console write that writes out the uh, two fields untrans and late so the first time through this is going to get uh, t table 0, second time through it's going to get t table 1, third time through it's going to get t table 2, and the fourth time through it's going to get t table 4. And it's going to write each of these out in turn, turn because uh, for each iteration of the for each, TTE is going to be overwritten by that table entry. So if we uh, compile this by typing CSC space and then right clicking what we have in the clipboard which is the name of the program and then if we right click and get rid of the dot CS first we compile then we run the program and we see each of the four statements that list each of the values in the array of structs. Now we want to go back to our original directory listing and this time get the arg underscore use dot cs Oops. and hit enter to put it into the clipboard. Do the same trick of mpp and right click to uh, put it on the command line and bring this up in uh, notepad plus plus and basically this just shows how command line arguments are handled in C sharp and essentially we have the same uh, public static void main 
entry point into the program we had previously but this time between the parents we put a string uh, square bracket square bracket args which define an array of strings much like we defined array of structs in the previous program the original format for command line uh, arguments and uh, C you know uh, God knows how many years ago 50 years ago <laughs> originally uh, was int arg C comma char star arg V uh, square brackets and essentially this has the arg C as the count of the number of arguments and array of uh, character pointers is the equivalent of an array of strings. So the arg v, the char star arg v array is pretty much identical with the C sharp string array. But we don't have uh, pointers in C sharp. There are no pointers at all. And essentially that's because malicious or incompetent or both people could set a pointer equal to a value that was entirely outside of the program and do something like overwrite a huge part of your operating system and bring down your computer, you know, cause your computer to crash. Or that was the rationale. I actually worked in C and C++ for a lot of years and I never saw anyone actually do that. But <laughs> they were insecure about it, so they got rid of pointers. There are no pointers in C Sharp. And we don't need arg c anymore because we have the length attribute of an array. So we can get the number of items in the array from args.length. And we no longer need the uh, char star because we now have the string data type. And in order to reference each of the uh, command line arguments in turn, we just specify <coughs> args, the array name, a square bracket, and the number of the position of the argument on the command line. And since all C-sharp arrays are zero-based, the first argument is going to be args uh, square bracket zero square bracket. The second argument is going to be args square bracket one square bracket and so on. If we look at these ideas implemented in the program, uh, the first thing I have after the uh, defining line is args.length equal to two. If args.length is equal to two, then actually execute the program. If not, uh, write you need to have two arguments in the program name. So here, as we said before, we're using args.length attribute to get the number of arguments that were passed to the program. And then within the console.write line, we're using the uh, format string to say argument one equals uh, brace zero brace, which referenced the first uh, argument after the format string which is args square bracket zero square bracket and argument two equals curly brace uh, one curly brace which references the second parameter after the format string which is args square bracket one square bracket so if we compile this program once again, getting the name by right-clicking the mouse and copying the clipboard to the command line. And then we run it by right-clicking the mouse and then getting rid of the last three characters. We see you need two arguments after the program name. So with zero arguments, this doesn't work. It's designed to work with two arguments. So if I use the up arrow to bring back my last command, and then I say Doug and Karen as two arguments and hit enter. You see the program says argument one equals Doug 
and argument 2 equals Karen. Well, both these principal command line arguments and array of structs are critical in the program we're about to write. And in the next two tutorials, I'll show two different versions of that program, one in a Windows application and one in the final form of a console application. I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, tutorial and learned a lot from it. And don't forget to subscribe.